Hey everybody, how's it going? John here. Today we're going to write a very simple game in Java, a number guessing game. So it's a good um, beginner's game to make if you're not uh, super advanced coding in Java, you're just kind of getting started, but you want to make a fun little game. Uh, this will be a great thing to try out. We'll walk through the entire coding process beginning to end, and we'll end with a working little game. So I think that'll be pretty fun. All right, so, so how it will work is the computer will randomly pick a number between 1 and 100, and then it will just prompt you to take guesses as to what the number is. And if you're right, it says, great, you're right, you're one. And if you magically get it the first time, that'll be it. But if you don't get it, it just tells you whether the real number is higher or lower than what uh, the, the number that you entered was. And then when it finally does end, it says, oh, great, you found it. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing we need is a random number, right? And in Java, the easiest way to get one of those is using the random class. Not just any class, it's a random class. Not a random class, it's this random class. Sorry. So we'll declare a new random called rand and set that equal to new random. Cool. And then, uh, so we're going to need, oh, and we'll organize imports to get uh, java.util.random. If you're not using a sweet IDE like Eclipse here, um, this is the import you need. And then to, um, we're going to want to create um, our variable to hold our random number. So we'll just make it an int between 0 and 100, and int is fine. So int random number, we'll declare that, um, and set that equal to, uh, here's where we're going to gen actually generate the random number. It's rand.nextInt uh, is what you want here. And it takes a parameter, basically a range. So if you say next int 100, it begins with 0 inclusively and goes up to the number that you specify exclusively. So it starts with 0 and ends with 99 in this case if we did uh, 100. But what we want is actually a number between 1 and 100. That's just that's just the range I want. You can do it between 0 and 99 or whatever range you want. You can code this between to be between 0 and a million if you really want the user to have a terrible time. Anyway, if we want to get a random int between 1 and 100, we will just take this random int that we have between 0 and 99 and all we have to do is add one. And then we have a random int between uh, one and 100, and we're in business. OK, so now that we have a random number, we just need to prompt the user, hey, please uh, enter your guess. And so to do that, let's uh, go ahead and print out a print statement, system.out.println, enter your guess. And we'll say, you know, between one and 100. Um, just to help them out. Why not? Enter your guess, 1 to 100. Okay, and then um, we need to actually accept their input. And to do that, we'll use the scanner class. If you want to check out a full video on how to use the scanner class more in depth than we're going to use it here, um, go ahead and check out this video. It's a full in depth tutorial on that. So hit that up. Uh, but anyway, here we're going to create a new scanner. We'll call it scanner. Uh, new scanner scanner equals new scanner and system dot in to be a keyboard input organize imports we want this java util scanner so now we have two imports up here so now we want to get an int from the user and we also want to store that int somewhere in, in a variable so uh, to do that let's create our int uh, player guess good name for it equals um, scanner dot next int. That's the method that gets an int uh, as input from the user. And so we'll, this will get the user's input and put it here in player guess. And um, actually, so we can reuse this maybe later, we can put this scanner here at the top. Just, just kind of, you know, makes more sense to have it there. So now we just need to check if the player guess is right, or if it the real number is higher or lower than the guess. All right, so uh, we'll just have a little if else statement here. We can just say if player guess equals the random number, then uh, system dot out dot print line. Correct. You win. Hooray! And all the fanfare and huzzas and accolades ring forth. Everybody's happy. Otherwise, so else, if if the uh, the random number is larger than the player guess, 
then that's what we're going to print out. By the way, if you want to be really cool and do your uh, print statements with a little shortcut, in Eclipse, you can type sys out and then hit uh, control space and then it'll print out that whole method name for you. Pretty cool, right? Make you like a programming ninja. So now we just tell them, uh, you know, the, the, the random number is, is greater than their guess. So we just say, nope, the number is higher. Guess again. Something like that. It can be whatever kind of note you want. And then um, otherwise, so we can have an else, uh, we, we can say else if, uh, you know, the random number is less than player guess, but we already know that that's the case in this case. It's not the same as the random number. You know, the random number isn't the same as the guess, and the random number also isn't greater, so that must mean it's less than. So we don't have to have another uh, if condition. We can just say else. We can copy this uh, system.out and say, nope, the number is lower. So I know this right now only allows one guess and then completes, but, um, but let's go ahead and just test that that works. So, okay, enter your guess. So right now the program has actually made the random number already, but it's not going to tell us what it is. Uh, so let's say enter our guess. We're going to guess 50. Nope, the number is higher. So here's the problem. We're coding this. We don't necessarily know that our code works because we don't know what the actual random number is. So for debugging purposes right now, let's print out the random number that actually gets created so we can um, cheat. So we're just going to go up here and do a sys out and, say, and just print out uh, the random number. Random number is random number. So we can cheat and just make sure it's giving us the right output, right? Okay, so the random number is 25, enter your guess. So if we say 25, it should say, hooray, we win. And it does. Uh, we'll run it again. Random number is 60, so let's say if we say 61. Nope, the number is lower, guess again, so that's right. And now we're gonna do, uh, so it's 78, we'll guess 77, and it says the number is higher. So, sweet, that all works. All right, now. Of course, right now, it's a kind of a crap game. Like, you can only guess once, and it just goes, nope. And then it ends. The program ends, and you can't guess anymore. So what we need to do here is have a loop that keeps going and only uh, escapes that loop if the correct answer happens, right? So we can do that with a just a while true loop. And so what that is going to do so the way while loops work, as you might know, is it just keeps doing this loop while this condition in this parentheses is true. And of course, true, the literal true is always true. So we might think, oh man, it's always going to loop through here. When's it ever going to, going to escape? Well, the only way to kick out of a while true loop is with an explicit break statement. If you put in a break statement um, like this, just break, it'll pop out of that loop um, explicitly, even if you have a while true. So that's how we're going to do it. And so that means we only want to break out and stop the program when the user guesses the correct answer. So in the condition that the random number is higher than the player guess, or that the, the, the random number is lower than the player's guess, we want to keep looping. We don't want to kick it out. But if the player has guessed the correct answer and the game is over, that's when we want to put in our break statement, right? And as a, a brief point here, it's important where you put uh, where you put your while loop. Of course, you don't want to uh, have the while loop include the random number generation because then you'd have a brand new random number each time you loop through there, and it'd be a pretty junky game. Like the real number is higher, and then it gets a completely different number for the next round. So if you'd like to make an incredibly frustrating and generally not a fun game at all, you can do that. But if you would like to make a decent game for humans to play you can do it this way. So you want to start the loop where you're prompting the user to enter their guess and then, you know, taking their, actually accepting their guess and doing the check. Because also if you move this while true uh, too late, then you're not getting the user's uh, new guess each time. You're just rechecking the same guess. Anyway, this is the place where you want to do it. So let's go ahead and run our program and test it out. Okay, the real number is 16, we know, because we're cheating. So we can say 15. And it says, nope, it's higher. And we can say 17. It says, nope, it's lower. But it's looping. It's doing the right thing, right? Every time we're entering something wrong, 
It says, no, that's lower. We can enter negative, blah, 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 blah. And actually, that value gives an exception because the number I entered is too big for an int. Ints only go like positive or negative 2 billion, and that's uh, more than that. So I busted it. That's my bad. Let's go ahead and try that again. So round real number is 84. Type in, you know, 12. Okay, the real number is higher. I type in 85. The real number is lower. I can type, type in negative whatever. Oh, no, no, it's higher. Cool. So that's all working. The loop is working. Now it should stop the loop and end the program when I guess the right number. So I can put in 84 and it goes correct. You win. And the program ends. It doesn't loop again. Doesn't prompt me for another guess. And so our game is working correctly. Awesome. A couple of notes in order to disable cheating. We want to uh, get rid of this line that actually prints out what the random number is. And you can just uh, comment it out instead of removing it in case you want to put it back in um, later for debugging purposes or whatever. And now let's go ahead and really play the game. Enter your guess. Let's see. Uh, I'll do 50 again. Okay, the real number is lower. I'm going to do the most efficient algorithm I think I know, which is basically just dividing it in half each time. Uh, no number is higher, and so what's about halfway between 25 and 50? Uh, I don't know, what is it, like uh, 38? Something like that? Okay, the real number is lower, so let's guess like 31. Yes, got it! That's a lot more satisfying when you aren't cheating. That's pretty cool. I like this, this is a neat little game. You know, it's not Dark Souls, it's not GTA 5, but it's a fun little game. Now, some little exercises for you if you're, if you're learning programming, uh, these will be a good thing to do. You can, um, instead of always doing between, like, you know, 1 and 100, maybe you could uh, have the user uh, put in what, how big they want the range to be. And you, they can put in, like, you know, 100,000 or something, and you say, okay, well, now the number will be, to, be between 0 and 100,000. Or you could also, like, you know, limit the number of attempts they get. You can only maybe give them, like, five attempts, and then at the end of it, they lose. You can keep a count and do that. Um, you can give them a score at the end, like it took you this many tries to win. Uh, actually, let's do that right here in this video. Let's make that enhancement. We'll tell the user it took you this many rounds to figure it out. So it's kind of like a score, like golf. You want to get a really low score. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we need to create an int um, try count outside of this while loop. And we're going to initialize it uh, to zero, right? So when they start out, they haven't made any attempts at all. And now after they make their attempt, we want to increment that try count. And all we have to do to increment that try count by one is do try count plus plus. And then at the end, when we say correct, you win, we can, um, we can put a statement that just says, it took you try count tries. Uh, okay. Not try country. I just automatically typed country. Try count tries. Make space there. All right, so that's a simple little addition, right? That's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and run it. Uh, let's guess. Uh, let's go a little differently this time. We'll do 40. Okay, the real number is higher. Uh, 65. Real number is higher. 90. I got it. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. All right, and it says it took me three tries, and guess what? It's exactly right. This program is a genius. That's pretty cool. I kind of like this, this little program. It, it, you know, it, it didn't take long at all to make. It was real simple, um, but it's kind of satisfying when you get it right, when you're not cheating. Now, as I always say, at the end of all my videos where we use Scanner, and we've got a resource leak since we haven't closed our scanner yet, so we got to do it. Got to be good Boy Scouts. At the end of your program, run scanner.close. And you'll feel like a good citizen of the world. You're not leaking any resources all around your program like some barbarian. Just, you know, closing your scanners just makes you a good, unique person. Not everybody does it, but you do. Because you don't want to leak your resources. Good. No, I'm watching you. Close your scanners. So that was a real fun little game. I had a lot of fun making that. So if you did too, and if you learned something, please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. I'll be turning these out all the time new and a fun Java programs to write. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.